Hey there, and welcome back to the AFI Project Lab. If you're just joining us for the first time, we're so glad you're here, and we hope that you like what we have in store for you today. I've been obsessed with using essential oils in my projects lately, so I'm gonna show you my easy formula for making essential oil-based reed diffusers. Reed diffusers are a really lovely way to send your space and make some great decor, so keep watching to find out how you can make some of your own. Before we get started, let's talk a little bit about how reed diffusers work. Reed diffusers are a popular method of home fragrance that use hollow reeds to carry fragrance into the air. They're a great alternative to candles if you want to consistently scent your space without having to worry about an open flame. To make reed diffusers, you'll need a packaging bottle and some reeds. These reeds can be synthetic or made from rattan. Rattan reeds come from various vine-like palms that contain little hollow channels. Synthetic reeds are made from fibers that mimic the same hollow channels of rattan reeds. These reeds work in the same way a candle wick does, carrying scent and liquid up from the bottle and into the air. They also come in a couple different thicknesses from 2.75 millimeters to 3.25 millimeters. Okay, so there's a couple things to keep in mind when making your reed diffusers. When picking out your bottle, you'll want a bottle that has a narrow mouth that's wide enough to fit your reeds. I've got a couple of examples to give you an idea of what I mean. These bottles can hold plenty of reed diffuser liquid, but with a narrow mouth like this, it'll keep the liquid from evaporating out of anything other than the reeds. This will ensure that your diffusers last much longer. Also, unless you plan on using your re-diffuser right away, you'll want to make sure that they come with a stopper or a lid to seal them up nicely. When not in use, re-diffusers should be capped to prevent the fragrance from evaporating. Now with all of that out of the way, we can actually make our fancy fragrant decor. When it comes to making reed diffusers, you really only need two ingredients, the solvent and the fragrance. A good reed diffusing solvent should be a thin liquid. Although it's tempting to use a carrier oil like sweet almond oil, even lightweight oils are too viscous to adequately carry the fragrance through the reeds. Additionally, you'll want your solvent to have a moderate evaporation rate. Alcohols like SDA 40B and even household liquors don't make for great reed diffusing solvents because they evaporate very quickly and as such, your reed diffusers won't last long. So, what does that leave you with? Well, when it comes to making reed diffusers, I really prefer butyl carbitol from Dow. It's widely available in the US and makes for some of the strongest smelling, longest lasting diffusers I've ever made, all while being VOC compliant. I've got it right here and you can take a look at it. It's a clear, odorless water liquid that essential oils and fragrance oils alike blend into really well. Because it's a solvent, it will help thin any scented oils that you use with it, allowing even the thickest fragrances to be used in your reed diffusers. The ratio of solvent to essential oils that I'll be using today is two to one. That's about 66% solvent and 33% essential oil. I'll round that up to 34% for a total of 100%. My bottles are able to hold 3.8 ounces of liquid in total, meaning that I'll be using 2.5 ounces of butyl carbitol and 1.3 ounces of tea tree oil. Making the reed diffuser liquid itself is super simple. I'm just going to combine the two liquids and give them a thorough stir. You'll notice right away how strong your fragrance of choice has become. Tea tree oil is such a good choice for a reed diffuser in my opinion because it's really good at deodorizing spaces. When I smell tea tree oil, I think about clean spaces in the spa. So this is perfect for this project. With those two stirred up, use a funnel to cleanly pour the liquid into your bottle. You're gonna remove the decorative neck before doing so to make it easier. If you don't wanna use your diffuser right away, pop the stopper in and your diffuser is complete. In my case, I'm gonna be putting this in my office right away, so let's get some reeds in there. The amount of reeds that you use depends on how much liquid you've made and what type of reeds that you're using. The smaller your reeds are, the more that you'll need and vice versa. Ultimately, how many reeds that you use is up to you, but generally, I recommend using around 10 reeds to start. My reeds are 2.75 millimeters, and 10 of them properly fill the neck of my bottle. You'll wanna make sure that you add enough reeds to fill the neck of the bottle, but not so much that you have to cram them in there. Too few reeds and the diffusing liquid will evaporate through the gaps between each one, and you won't get the proper steady diffusion. To get the most out of your reeds, rotate them every couple of weeks and keep an eye on the liquid levels in the bottle. Alongside your reed diffusers, you can sell refill liquid in cheaper packaging that allows your customers to use their diffusers over and over. And there we go! My diffuser is looking great. From here, it's easy to customize your bottle with labels, ribbons, and more. Again, make sure you've got some stoppers on hand as well as plenty of protective packaging if you're shipping these out. Glass bottles make for beautiful reed diffusers but can be fragile. Unfortunately, 
Packages can be handled less than gently during shipment, so it's a good idea to take precautions by shipping them with bubble wrap or craft paper to keep them from shattering. When it comes to pricing your reed diffusers, keep their high-end packaging and large fragrance concentration in mind. At a whopping 34% of the diffusing liquid, that fragrance can add up fast. And that being said, here at AFI, we offer quality fragrance and essential oils that won't break the bank. So if you're looking to make some reed diffusers of your own, be sure to check out our web store. And there you have it. I really hope this video helped demystify making reed diffusers and showed how versatile our essential oils can be. Head on over to our web store and find your new favorite essential oil and get to making your own reed diffusers today. If you have any questions about this how-to, our fragrances, or what you should be making this season, drop them down below. As always, I'm Caitlin, and I'll see you guys in the Project Lab real soon. See you then, fragrance fam. Bye.